Okay, so Jerry is up today and he's going to go over the color modules with us. And we can see your okay, good. So you're good. Oh, so I'm up here already. Hmm. Okay. Well, thanks, Jess, for being our tech guru. Very much appreciated. And on the behalf of um, Randy and Ron, we thank all of you for uh, wanting to learn more about judging. And tonight's topic is color. And there are two modules here on color. First of all, we go through various colors. And then the second module is on, on evaluating color. Okay, so this module will talk about the different color classes and then the ADS color guide for how colors are classified and then how to determine the color chip from, from a book that we'll see in a little bit. Okay, so we start with where is color determined in fully double dahlias? And if you remember from last week, Ron talked about the form being determined at the equator of the bloom. And sure enough, it's the same with color. So you look at the equator of the bloom, the mature ray florets, and we determine color there. Oh, it does say three feet away, okay, in a natural light. Well, you know, natural light is certainly hard at a show because most of our shows are in a mall, like Summit Mall has a, a skylight there, and the skylight can throw all kinds of different light on, on the blooms before. At Mahoney, it's a little nicer because there are some windows there, so you can, I remember Tony taking some blooms over to the window. Um, sun was not coming in, but but the light was a little better there than it was with the fluorescent lights and so forth in the, in the hall. Sometimes the reverse of the ray fluoret is clearly visible. So for example, in this Nick Senior, um, that Quinn and Chris had a really nice, nice Nick senior, where was it, at Pittsburgh or someplace? But you can see it's an informal deck and you can see that not all informal decks do this, but if they twist enough, you can see the reverse or the back of the floret showing as it is right here at about nine o'clock and down here at six o'clock and so on. And um, that color is indicated oh, not oh, part God. of the overall color, like here it's red, double A, ID, red, but in the color chips. And a color chip here, and we'll talk more about chips here shortly, is a red 23. And then that, um, backside, if you will, or the reverse side, is a bronze uh, indicated as a bronze seven. Hey, Ron, are, are there brackets here because of the informal, I mean, what's going on here in the reverse? Because not that's all right. IDs have these brackets. Right. That's, that's uh, unique for the ones who have reverse showing and that's no. you know that's just the um let's see that's the definition of that those brackets it's part yeah. of the definition of an id with a back that shows or i think there are others as well but well, i know bodacious, uh, bodacious doesn't always twist that much yeah. i think bodacious right. also has the brackets on it but Anytime you see a color indicated that way, though, that's what it means. Many. It is listed in the book that way, too, with the yeah. brackets. Yeah. yeah. But there aren't many like that, I don't think. 
But here you have then, here's the, the face or the front of the, of the florette. That's the red. And then the back or the reverse of the florette is, uh, is the bronze seven. I don't know if that looks bronze there in the picture, but that's what it's classified as. Okay, now what about open center dahlias? Well, ordinarily, it's the face also. But there are two exceptions. And you can see the exceptions are going to be orchids. Here's an orchid. This is Midnight uh, Star. And uh, orchids. And why? Well, because they are involute, you can see the reverse coming around. And that's what you see as you look at the bloom directly. So for or orchids and orchids, it's the... Um, it's the the color is determined then by the reverse of the ray for red. In this case, it's a, it's a, it's a dark dark red. So ordinarily, face, but these are two exceptions: orchids and orchids. Let's see. I should be using this up. Okay. Now, oh, and you can see here in the back, the book, that's the color book. That's the official ADS color chart book. And uh, DSO has one. And if you um, seek me out at a show, uh, I, can, I can show you what that book looks like. And you can see what they're, um, how they're trying to determine the color for a seedling. Now, typically this is going to be at the seedling bench. In other words, somebody has developed a new variety that they like to have classified. And, and maybe it's this one sitting in front of us here. Although not too good because this looks like a pretty blown center over here on the left. But at any rate, you pluck a, um, a floret from the equator pretty typical uh, florette. And then, now in this case, he's showing, he's looking at it above. He's trying to find all of these are reds on these two pages. And there might be another page too, I'm not sure. But he's trying to match the color there of the florette to one of the chips here in the book. Now, what many of us do, however, is to uh, take that floret and put it under the page because you can see there's a hole in each one of these chips and then we move the floret around to see uh, a little bit better perhaps as to what that uh, color chip should be. Now that's like the red 7 or red 8 or red 14. That's Those numbers then are indicated on this chart um i have i personally have the hardest time doing this but i have two colleagues two colleagues in the in the society both of whom are colorblind and they do a <laughs> heck of a better job at <laughs> determining the color that, that that i do so so much for that okay uh I think I think the uh, I think the old uh, instruction to the judges included a comment to the effect that uh, women's color perception is better than than oh. men's as well. So I mean that uh, I, I just a uh, just a comment that you know if you if you if it isn't clear one of the things that we sometimes do is you know get a uh, a, a woman involved in looking at it and doing the comparison, and her yeah. her perception might be better than some men. Yeah, good, good, good point. Uh, by the way, just to make it clear, we don't bring this color chart around as we're judging a show. This is for identifying the classification of uh, a new entry. In other words, somebody has. Uh, hybridized uh, a, a new bloom that they've done for three years or whatever. 
And then they bring three of those blooms to the show, stage them in a vase, and then uh, Ron or others, but Ron probably will will pick, I think it's a senior judge for sure has to be on the committee that does the classification. And typically we have three or maybe four, four judges. And, and uh, so that's what's going on. That's called the seedling bench at a show, or it, it could be done in a trial garden as well. Except I usually just talk about seedling benches because we don't have any trial gardens near us any longer. Jerry, that also could be used at the classification table at a show. You know, if, yeah. if, if something needs classified, an exhibit needs classified. Right. Uh, now only my this only this works now. Okay, hold on. Okay. Now, what about white? Well, you can see the whites here. Oh, maybe you can't. Now, this is where my pictures are covering the chart, at least on my screen. Can you see the whole of this uh, yes. white color chart? The whole thing. Yes. Okay. Full screen. So if um, <laughs> Randy's in, in front of the one I'm pointing at right here, but that's white. It certainly looks gray to me, but, and look at the different whites here. This is kind of greenish. The one up here is kind of yellowish and so forth and so on. But you can see the numbers below here, white one, white two, white three, white four, five, six, et cetera, et cetera. And there are a couple pages of whites. Now, if you look at the white, it's kind of the pure white on the border of the page. That is what is referred to as white zero. And that's probably the purest of the, of, of, of the whites. Okay. So here are the colors. There are 15 colors. The... Uh, numerical designation for them is 0, 1, 0, 2, down to 15. The letter designation is, as you might guess, W for white, Y for yellow, or OR for orange, pink, dark pink, red, dark red, lavender, purple. Oh, and now this is kind of purple slash black. They've included that in the um, current classification handbook. Light plan is a 10, bronze is 11, flame is a 12, dark plan, variegated and bicolor. And then of course, here's the, the word written out. Okay, so color and dahlias can be indicated in two ways, as I just mentioned, the use of color, uh, letters like L for lavender, LB for light blend, or the last two digits in the ADS four digit numbering system. So for example, this bloom, this is Brian R, beautiful bloom, too beautiful. It, it beat me at, at uh, Jaga Fair a few years ago. This was Debbie Finley. So she took best in show and, and deservedly so. This is definitely a nicer bloom than, than mine. And the last two digits you see, remember this first digit is the size. The second is, is uh, the form. So size two means a B, you know, eight to 10 inches. Second digit is the form. Zero means formal DAC. We talked a little bit about that last week. And then the last two digits here are for the color. And this is true whether it's uh, fully double or um, uh, open center. So this is going to be a 2008. Very nice, huh? Or from the letter point of view, we would say B, F, D, L. Then if you wanted to know what chip L is, you'd have to go to the book and um, find out. And if this is would be written in the in the classification book, but if you were classifying this, 
on the ceiling bench, then it would no doubt have a L14 or something afterward, indicating the strength of that hue. Okay, so some vocabulary. So we'll talk about blend, blush, Brax, Izone, Piketty, and Wolf Petal. So the first thing here is the blend. So a blend is two or more um, or merging or contrasting colors on either the face or the reverse of the floret. And so here you see a blend taking place here between yellow and whatever this pink or whatever this color is out here. And back here, it's darker, but nonetheless, um, that's a blend. Not very nice on this one, actually. Whoops, sorry, it went backwards. A blush, um, a blush has, I mean, one can look at this perhaps and in, in depending on how this other color, typically at the ends of the florets, how strong that is, it could look like a blend, but a blush typically is just a kind of subtle other color at the end of the gray florets, a kind of tinge coloration that I think really makes the bloom look nicer. Um, one you might be familiar with. I don't know what this is. Do you know what this is? Clearview Edie, I believe. Clearview Edie. Um, Baron Dalton is has has a blush to it. And um, one, one of the th things mentioned here is that Blushes can kind of fade out and disappear depending on the climate uh, of the of the season. Um, blends won't. Blends pretty much hold hold their their two two uh, coloring. I think the blushes are sometimes like they come on later in the season. Is that true with Baron Dalton, Ron? Not sure. It tends to have it early, I think, uh, early Sharon, and, but... not, and then goes away. Yeah, I think they tend to have it early, and then the the, the climate kinds of washes it out as the, you know, depending on how intense the sun is. And I think, so yeah, I think it's that way rather than the other, or maybe later in the bloom cycle. You know, as it gets older, I think it may tend to oh. lose. Lose the lavender, sure. So, but I feel the sense that a young bloom tends to have it. Is really magic pretty. moment a magic moment of blush too? Yes. Yeah. I think yeah, magic yes. moment's a blend, isn't it? No, it's a blend. Well, no, you a, don't know it's a blush. White blush. Uh, it could be blush. Um, blush is not in the classification numbering system right. so it's you observe it basically but you don't can't identify it by the lettering system or the numbering system Magic a, moment is, is labeled as a white not yep. a blend yep so that would say that when we see that little bit of pinkish lavender it's a blush right yeah right, right. yeah if 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 this if this uh, lavender, whatever, is strong enough, then it would be classified as a blend. If it's white, but it's not a light blend uh, or a uh, blend, then and then it's going to be a blush, and that would be so, a blush. So does that make it a fault if you've got something classified as a white, like Clearview Edie, and it ends up looking like this at the end of the season? You can't really show that. No, it, I I don't think. I think if if the blush is uniform, right? If it's not uniform, it's going to be a fault. But if there is a blush and it's uniform, then it really I think enhances the bloom. I think I think if it's equal in symmetry, you know the the actual uh, blush 
to where it's it's identical throughout the from you know the circumference of the bloom it's an enhancement <clears throat> yeah this ka cloud is that at the end of the season it starts to go blush and i'm thinking well i can't show that because it's blushed oh um, no well no i think next, you next time it. put it in the bucket <laughs> okay <I'm laughs> you you can show it <laughs> If not, yeah, I'll put it in my bucket. I'll take it home. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, let's see, is it in the next slide? No, but a little later, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, Brax, you have this structure located at the base of each uh, florette. You can see it here and here, you know, where the arrows are. And the Brax are... Uh, really uh if it, 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 it as the ray florette comes out and it kind of forces it back so that you can't see it fine but if you can see the brax as you observe like over here not good definitely a definitely a fault on some of your things like uh, a palm where you know the palm is the smallest of the balls, um, has to go all the way, close all the way to the back. Sometimes those bracts get in the way. And when the palm, palm is young, you might want to pluck those bracts because otherwise they could inhibit the palm from closing around all the way to the back. I zone. Uh, I zone. I I think they're absolutely gorgeous. It really it enhances the bloom. Here's the I zone. It's this uh, uh, contrasting color around the the disc uh, florets. About a third, perhaps, out as the at the length of the of the uh, ray florets. And again, it needs to be uniform. This one's absolutely beautiful. This is Kelsey Dwarf. Absolutely beautiful. Don't you think? Love it. I don't know what this yes. one is over here on the left. Oh, so it does say a uniform band of contrasting color, less than a third the length of the ray florets that surround the open centered disc flowers. Nice. Pick a tea. Pick a tea is also something that really makes a bloom strikingly beautiful. Um, do you know what either one of these is? Randy, this is what I was asking you about. Yeah, I, I don't. The one on the right may, may be uh, Clearview Debbie, but I'm not sure. Oh. Uh, and the one on the left might be Hearts Bonnie. I saw that at the Wooster show a few years ago, and I've been trying to track it down ever since. Hearts Bonnie. Oh, nice to know. It's very pretty, isn't it? Oh, they're both really nice. He just, it, yep. it's almost like a, he took a little paintbrush or something and just went around the, the margins <laughs> of the, of the of the ray florets just it, to me to me it's kind of like the blush in the whites it's if it's uniform it's an enhancement you know yeah 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 wonderful that's Piketty. and then a wolf petal in, in statistics we in statistics we would call it an outlier so you have i mean when you look at this bloom there's no way on earth that your eyes don't go directly to that white petal right there. That's a wolf petal. It really is distracting and not good. I mean, if you left this, well, there's no way that that bloom is going to get to the court because that's just too strikingly uh, obviously that obvious uh, distraction. Um, what might you do? Pull it out. Yeah, I suppose you could pluck that out. You do have to be a little careful there because depending on how big that florette is, 
that could leave a pretty good sized hole there. Um, but I would prefer having a hole there that may or that the judges may or may not pick up on as much as leaving that white there, which is definitely not good. Okay, any questions here so far? This was the show, I think, at uh, Longwood in uh, Philadelphia a few years back. Yes. And if you look way at the end here, way go way, 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 way here in the front. You see this little hunch guy on the left? Perplexed, I think, Looks over what, yeah, yours truly, by the way, over what the guy on the, his guru on the right is trying to tell us. And that's Ron. I don't know who's in the middle. Ron, do you know who's in the middle there? No, I, I didn't see us in there. <laughs> the Badger Twinkle debate? I mean, it could be. Uh. <laughs> I don't know who's in the middle there, but but I'm on the left and Ron's on the right. But isn't this a beautiful show? It was spectacular, yeah. It's it's sunken down and uh, and this is these basically all the large growers in here. Then if you look up on the left, you see way on the left here, it's on an upper level. You see blooms back there along that. The, the small growers, that's where I was. The small growers were, were, were up there. How Good. about Wayne Shantz? Maybe Wayne. Maybe Wayne. Oh, it might be Wayne. Oh. So uh, the, uh, the label here is that no color class is of any greater merit than the others. So no matter what your favorite color might be, um, when it comes down to judging dahlias, there's no, try not to be prejudiced. Uh, there's no color that has greater uh, strength or merit than any other. Okay, so they're all in the... Uh, you know, they're in the classification book. By the way, this is the 2023. Um, the 2024 just came out. If if you haven't gotten it yet, you will shortly. But I, it was pointed out that there's some there's some errors in the back of that one. So they're mistakes. So I don't know how, how that... Jess, did you... I, I think it starts with the awards and it's from the awards back. Yeah. So it's the main part of the book is fine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Something's wrong with the uh, with the words in the back. Uh, these two blooms here are the um, uh, twenty twenty one Stanley um, uh, Johnson uh, uh, medal winners, and I think that's the what the most higher. Do I have that right? Stanley Johnson is the 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 the. Uh, Blooms with the most higher awards for that year. And well, apparently in 2021, there was a tie. Sharon has the 2024 up. If you could see her photo. Oh, if you see, yes. That's uh, Lake Hills, Lake Hills uh, creamsicle. Well, thanks, Sharon. Yeah. I think the backside has... Uh... Dick Parshall's uh, Clearview Cannon. Yeah. Very nice. And it's a little bigger this year. Yeah, the book is a little bigger this year. Put in your pocket? Well, I don't put anything in a pocket anyhow, but I don't know. It, no. that have, I think that's a pretty big pocket. Yeah, you pretty much need an apron, I think, to put it in the pocket of an apron. Yeah. Or cargo pants, like Tony used to wear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's five inches. Okay, so they want to look at the colors again in a little more detail, I guess. Um, uh, so we repeat then, there are 15. Oh, here's a quiz. How many forms were there last 
week. Do you remember that? How many forms are there? 20. Good job. 20, 20 forms. 15 mm -hmm. colors. 15. And they just go through each one. Uh, white is an 01. Don't know the chip on it. Doesn't give you a chip here. Um, but, and I can't read at the top because my taskbar is covering it, but there are various. It says in white dahlias, blushes of ivory, cream, lavender, and pink do not decrease the purity of a bloom, but may often enhance it. Uh, thanks, Jess. So that's what we were talking about a little bit before, that apparently there are some judges that I mean, there, there was a reason, I guess, for whoever put the you know, the committee that put these slides together felt that it was important to mention that those particular colors do not decrease the purity of a bloom in a blush, but may often enhance it. So I thought that would have been a natural conclusion, but apparently there are those who feel that a blush detracts from the purity, perhaps, or the solid color of the of the bloom. So down below here, we see dahlias with a blush are classified as a solid color. In other words, the blush is not in the designation of the classification. And the presence of a uniform blush is not a color fault. So they're really going to make sure that people realize that. Yellow is an O2. Orange, O3. Is that Woodland's Wild Thing, maybe? Not sure. And it looks like it. Uh, O4, nice incurved cactus. That's a pink. At a Holly Hill cotton candy. Is that what that was? That's yeah. what this one is? Pink. Good. Thanks. And then uh, dark pink O5. And somebody last week asked about these um, <clears throat> florets having kind of a heart shape. Now I can see what they were mentioning. But probably not a ball here anyway, because the really around the equator here looks it looks pretty formal deck. What about the little stripes on the petals? Uh, yeah, we'll look at the uh, uh, we keep that in mind as we look at the evaluation module, which is next. Um, but those stripes can can be can be a fault. It is, however, pretty uniform, isn't it? Ron, how would you how would you look at well, okay, let's skip ahead to evaluation. How would you evaluate that stripe in there? Well, I, as as you started to say, I think, Jerry, if it were uniform, I sure wouldn't worry about it too much. If you had it against one that was identical and didn't have those stripes in it i would take the i would prefer the pure color to the to that little stripe yeah i think that's i think that's what what you'd need to consider but it's a mighty minor fault in my mind yeah very minor to mine too mainly because look how uniform that is there's every one of these ray florets has that stripe in it i think to me it enhances it it's kind of like a the Piketty. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't really like how that yeah. works. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would argue that, that would be. Done. I can envision that being an interesting discussion yeah. among the judges judging that bloom. And, you know, that probably both of those perspectives are, you know, entirely valid. That green center would be a much bigger attraction. No, right. I'm just going to say, as long as you ignore the throw green it out, center. Throw it out anyway. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but um, maybe it just has a little more to go. I don't, yeah. It's got a lot more to go. But 
A green okay. center is certainly a problem. Okay, then on to, sorry, on to red. Uh, not a very nice uh, or cat. If you're looking at, I know we're not looking at form, but none of these are well, closed over here. And um, as our cat should be. But that's a red. We're just looking at color. That's red. Uh, dark red, probably what? Spartacus, maybe. Uh, is it 07? 08 is lavender. Okay. It kind of has a stripe, too, but no, it's not as prominent in all of the florets as the one we just looked at before. Purple, 09. A light blend. Um, if you have your class, of, uh, that's what I forgot to ask you in the beginning, is to get your classification um, book handy. Because in order to identify, so what are the blends? We've got a light blend, we've got a dark blend, we've got a flame blend, and we've got a two-tone blend. So if we look at page 10 of the classification books, and I think that's both in the 2023, yes. I believe it's page 10 and 2024 also, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yes, page 10. And if we look at the definition of light blend, blends are dominated by the lighter tents, tents, uh, tents and tones of pink, yellow, lavender, and other pastels. Also, two-tone varieties. We'll see a two-tone here shortly. This is about the only place I, also, I see two-tone even mentioned. Anyway, varieties of pastel tents and tones in which the central ray florets are of a different color than the marginal ray florets. Just remember that as your definition of two-tone that we'll see in another slide or two. Okay, ignore white when determining a light or dark blend. Don't, alarm, uh, don't ignore white as you're determining if it's a blend, but you ignore white if you're determining if it's a light or dark blend. Now, what are the light blend colors? Well, you can see then the color chips, yellow one to yellow 24. Now, if you pop down to dark blend, which is below, it's number 13, you don't see any yellow in there. So if you see yellow in a light blend, uh, if you see yellow in a in, in 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 a blend, it's going to be a light blend. But then if you look at orange, orange one to ten would be light blend. Orange sixteen and seventeen is a light blend. But if you look down a dark blend, in between those numbers, orange 11 to 15 or 18 to 24 is a dark blend. So you really want to, again, find me at a show and look at the, the official color chart book to see how does... How do we have a light blend for orange, whatever? And then one more color chip higher is a dark blend. Anyway, um, that's what this means down here. See page 10 of the classification handbook for the list of color chips. Bronze is 11. Uh, flame. Flame should be really fiery looking, uh, very, very uh, kind of almost shocking colors. And it's emerging then of red and yellow, bronze and orange and various combinations. There again, look at page 10 of Flame and you can see the color chips 
indicating there, indicated there. And those, notice there's some oranges in there too that overlap with um, dark blend. I guess, why does this one have its own thing? Like why, why wouldn't this fall into like a dark blend? Um, because I guess because the color chips, for example, for flame are yellow six to yellow 24, but there are no yellows in dark blends. It's also uh, something inherited from the uh, previous uh, color system uh, that there were flame blends in that system. And when we converted to the new uh, color charts, we just identified the colors that were in our color chart that were consistent with the flame blends in the previous color chart, which was associated with an English uh, color chart that was 10 times as big or 20 times as big. So it's it's just kind of a carryover, uh, Jess, trying to okay. stay consistent from you know the pre two thousands to the post two thousands. Sometimes, uh, especially new judges and new growers will have a they'll, they'll have a problem with uh, defining some blooms in in the flame, where you got uh, obviously the flame where it, it gradually in uh, in in uh, blends, you know, where uh, comes to my mind is like a Jessica, which you know you have the same color 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 situation, but it's a bicolor where the color breaks are more definite and sharper. But those those are two different color uh, uh, chips or uh, situations. Thanks, Ron and Randy. This is my least favorite color, in case anybody cares. Oh. <laughs> I, I just like flames. <laughs> so the question is, is this a flame? Well, it is a blend. I think you can see that it's a blend. But to determine if it's a light, black, uh, light, dark, or um, flame blend, you really have to look at the chips and the definition of flame. So they have to be in these yellow 6 to 24 combined with orange 12 to 15 and so forth and, and, and so on. You're just putting something in a show. You look it up in the book and if it says it's a flame, it's a it, flame, it, right? Yeah. So it's only if you're on the seedling bench that you this is if you're on the seedling really bench, have to stress over right. it. And that's what basically this this judging part is about. But in a show itself, look at the book. If it looks like a flame and the book says it's a flame, then you go from right. there. Go from there. Except if it's not in the book. Right. So like if oh, it, there you go. Then, okay, then you put it on the classification table, and then we would have Ron and others, used to be Tony, um determine what in their mind, at least, it should be classified at, as in order to put it into one of the sections for judging purposes. So with that, Ron, do you just carry your color chips with you? Uh, I usually have them if there's a, any chance of doing a, uh, a seedling bench. Uh, yes. Okay. And to, but if it's just they... a single bloom that comes from somebody, and this is usually oh. more at the fair, a uh, fair than it is necessarily at Summit Mall. Um, it says someone brings you know one in, and you want to look at it. Don't know what it is, then you just make a judgment. That's I right. Have a question uh, at, the, if, at the Geauga County Fair, some of them we did not have to know the names of the dahlias. Wasn't it just done by sizes? Or by size and form? color, Coletta, yeah. Okay. And we just, at the fair, we just, 
you know, made a judgment call. And claims are the ones that, you know, are the kind of toughest to call because they require specific uh, chart elements. But in that situation, you just take your best shot, put it in. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And I think all the blends are together at the fair, aren't anyway, aren't they? I think so. Yeah. Uh, dark blend then is uh, 13. Colors of lower uh, uh, brilliance may either merge gradually, contract, contrast, and so forth. But here again, dark reds and purple. You have to look at page 10 of the classification book in order to determine. So apparently they feel that this, whatever color this is, is maybe a, a certain purple that is in the list of color chips on under dark blend on page 10. And so they just want to make sure that you understand this. In light and dark blends, the color that is dominant determines whether it's a light blend or a dark blend. The color chips in each blend are listed in the classification book, page 10. White is always considered a minority color in determining whether or not it is a blend. Um, and then you don't consider it to determine whether it's a light blend or a dark blend. For example, a cultivar with LV9 WH2 would be a dark blend. Why? Because LV9 is in the dark blend color list. And each ADS color is listed in either the light or dark list, but only in one of the lips. So there's no list, there's no overlap. Two tone is a blend. You can see the two tones and the one on the left here, it's white in the central uh, floret area. And then a, I don't know, pink or something mm -hmm. uh, otherwise. And over here on the right, it's a yellow in the center and then something else around as the ray florets move away from the center to the equator. Variegated, uh, we have these stripes and splashes and dots and flecks and narrow lines and so on. We'll see this again in the next module on evaluation, just as a hint, and you could probably determine this yourself. This is not going to be highly rated because it's not very uniform. Look at this stripe down here, very wide red. Here it's narrow, here hardly any at all, and so forth and so on. It has to be uniform. You know, variegated blooms are, are, are really kind of nice looking, but very hard to do well in a show. I They're feel just not yeah. uniform. They get a bad rap though, like variegated literally means that you're going to have a bunch of inconsistencies, right? And so I guess I, I feel like they kind of get a, a bum rap. They, and they do, uh, I guess the, the uniformity of color is the situation and that's why a lot of your strong exhibitors, you, you just don't see them on a table like uh, because you're right, they they are a beautiful bloom, you know. Yeah. But the uniformity is is the downfall of the bloom. Yeah, uh, but I guess like that category is never going to be uniform, right? Well, I see. You got uh, if you go around the the, uh, the the bloom itself. Now you you know here you got you know a big red, and then you come down and uh, here and. So if it was a little bit, if that red was a little more uniform as you went around, then 
you know, it becomes a much more attractive bloom. Same with uh, the blotching. Think, uh, so we, we've seen we've seen uh, variegated where the the blotching would would loosen up, where then you know it may not be as intense someplace, and then uh, and other places where it actually just that that change in the blotching would change the balance of color within the bloom. Yeah. I was just going to add that I think that on a particular plant or a particular cultivar, you will see <laughs> some relatively uniform variegated blooms and then, you know, maybe most of them not being. So there is uh, enough uh, variation that sometimes you do get good distribution of color. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a quiz. How many color classes, I don't know, Jess, you want to call them people or not. Oh, How yeah. many color classes are recognized by the ADS? I'm going to pick on Pat. <laughs> Pat's like, oh, thanks. Uh, 15. 15, good job. job. We'll give you confetti. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the most desirable color when judging values? Not flame. Just kidding. They're all equal, right? Yeah, they're all equal. Minus variegated because it gets a bum wrap. Dahlia judge should approach each of the 15 color classes without prejudice, recognizing that no color class is of any greater merit than the others. That was the, if you remember on the... Uh, Longwood, Philadelphia slide we showed uh, that was listed at the bottom. What color is this? Shannon. Yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, is that a dark blend? Or I... <laughs> That's a trick. It's, oh, it's you know, did, dominantly did skip, dark, so... Did I skip one? Is that a bicolor? <laughs> I, think you, I think maybe you <laughs> did, Jerry. <laughs> oh, here, I skipped this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you, Shannon. You get, you get to guess again, Shannon. You set me up to you fail. You get to guess again. <laughs> uh, bicolor. <laughs> that might, I don't know, that skip Lee's spot on the left or not, but look how uh, the bicolors, the two colors have to... Uh, be absolutely uh, distinct from each other. Um, I remember when I was on a, a on a trip in Brazil, and we were on the Rio Negra River, and then came up to the Amazon River. The Rio Negra River is black. The Amazon is more brown, and it was like cutting a knife. They did not blend into each other at all. They were absolutely separate. And every time I think of bicolor, I think of that. The one on the right here notices theoretically a bicolor, maybe not a very good one. But here on the left, the color dis uh, distinguishing is on the tips. But here on the right, this is like, do you know Santa Claus by any chance, Sharon or Shannon? But Santa Claus is like this. It's the the color separation is in this case um, a stripe, stripe down the middle. Not a very good one. Not very distinct. But that's what <clears throat> this is supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. Now let's try this again. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem using using the wheel on my mouse. I skip over things. Okay, we did that. We did that. We did that. We did that. Okay, Shannon, what do you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> Good I'm job. Go by color. Yeah, by color. Yeah. <laughs> Again, maybe not a great one, but I think it's. I mean, you can see how white this one is down here, and there's no color in it at all. But yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. 15 by, by color. And then it just tells you what we've just been talking about. 
Um, I don't know if this is Gloriosa or not, but it's, um, if not, it's like Gloriosa. Jeff. Is, I mean, pretty clearly what? Variegated. Variegated. And here, you know, I don't know. I just can't. And my eyes kind of focus on these wide stripes. I just don't, I don't like variegated anymore. I used to a long time ago, but can't get away from it. Um, mm. uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Not recognizing the, the 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 answer. Is a purple two white one a light blend or a dark blend? Black. Well, I don't know. I have to look at what. You have to look it up in the book. You've got to look it up in the book. I think all no purples way. are dark. All the purples, though, are, are are dark. So from that point of view, just recognizing this is a purple, you know, it cannot be a light blend. Or if it was all yellows, then it would be a light blend. Oh, good job. Well done, Jeff. Good job. So that's... The first of the, okay, Jess, now how do I get to the other one? Oh, on the tab to the left of that, it says instructions for the ADS judge. Yep, click that. Beautiful. And then seven. Thank you. Yep. So if we go to evaluating color, slideshow. You got it. And okay, so this was on evaluating color. Okay, so that was a little less than an hour. This one's even shorter. Maybe you asked me back all back all the time. <laughs> Drag it out, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to look at what are the desired qualities in color, as well as the faults and imperfections, and then faults by color, by dahlia type, uh, like blends and so forth, and then uh, some special considerations. All right. All right, so going back to being at uh, uh, being chosen to be a judge in the seedling bench. In other words, you are, oh, it's the kind of thing we do at Petites, isn't it? Yep. We, I mean, that's the idea at Petites is to, although we don't always have um, undisseminated uh, uh, blooms there, but we kind of believe that we have a three bloom, it's been brought in to be classified in order to be included in the ADS booklet. And then we, we judge and we go through this form. So there's a form for fully double and there's a form for open center. And you can see that you will see in both cases, form, you know, the two major classifications is form and color. Form is worth 30 points, as we talked about last week. Color is worth 20 points. And so you look at the blooms, you decide, sometimes talking with your other judges and so on, pointing out the faults, unless the bloom is perfect. Um, a number from zero to 30. Now you've got to realize, so we got 30 here, 20 there, and then each of these other classifications, substance, stem leaf, foliage, bloom position, and uniformity in the bench or auriferousness in the trial garden are 10 points each. Total then for a perfect bloom, that you'll never see is 100. So 
you need to have this total to be 85 or more to be considered for the classification book. For form, then 85% of 30 is what? I don't math. 35%, 85% of 30, right? It's going to be uh, 2 fives and 15. Four and a half. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was looking at 20. 20. Okay, so um, let's look at color since we're talking about color tonight. 85% of 20 is 17. There is a little cheat chart on the yeah. back of the scorecards there is that little so, for so example, you don't it, have to do the math so it tells you in the back uh oh, can you show it up there uh sharon yeah. or not yeah, yeah um, i can perform 100 percent is 30 90 percent is 27 25 and a half is oh isn't that really good is 85 percent so if you're going to pass this bloom on form, then you're going to have to be giving it 25 and a half points or higher. For a color, 17 or higher. And then for the other ones, eight and a half or higher. So if you're not real crazy about color, blotching, stripes, uh streak faded and so on then you're not going to give it 17 points it's going to be something less than 17. and if that's the case then some of these other characteristics better be pretty high otherwise you'll never get to 85 for that bloom there's it's not specific to color but if you're entering a seedling would you rather do it here at a show or at a trial garden? Uh, well, the show, you are bringing in just three blooms and they need to be as identical as possible. It's kind of hard to do sometimes, but the judges are assuming that you have chosen your three absolute best blooms of that cultivar. And a child garden, you're looking at several plants, aren't you, uh, Ron? Three, yes. Three plants. And now you have a number of blooms there to look at. Uh, I don't, that's a good question. From a, from the point of view of a, uh, purchaser, I would want to purchase a successful trial garden cultivar because I think they are evaluated on a broader range of dates and, uh, they are evaluated in a more realistic situation as opposed to having, you know, if if I had the good fortune to have 15 plants of one cultivar, uh, which I might well have when I'm trying to uh, introduce it, uh, I have the opportunity to pick from a lot of blooms. And uh, that just isn't true in, in the trial garden. So anyway, that's one perspective on it from the point of view of the purchaser. Uh, I also tend to send my seedlings to trial gardens uh, and show them in their class at shows. Okay. Can't you, right wouldn't there. you do both? And and then whichever one works, you yeah. can get it in the book? Yes, sure. I mean, don't, don't and you just need one trial garden to agree, right? Or, or is it a um, average? No, you, one, that's correct, one. But you have several judges at different times. Um, 
evaluating in a in a trial garden. Okay. On the show for for us, I mean, you bring it to Summit, Summit Mall. That's a one shot thing. We are well, going to talk about garden, this. I was just going to say this is the topic of uh, number four, so uh, we was we can hey. maybe postpone some of that till then. Yeah, okay. Paula did ask a question, though. Let me know if you want to table this for the next time. But she said, "Are there hybridizers that pass the trial garden and seedling bench by just entering in multiple bloom classes?" And get a few blue ribbons and get it classified. Yes. So that's another way around it. Yeah. Yes. Interesting. So do the judges go easier on them if they're just mixed in with everything else? Like it or well, you mean on in a show? Uh, I don't think. They don't necessarily even know. Oh, that's true. Yep, you wouldn't know. Interesting mm. strategy. Since you're so familiar with that particular section that you see a bloom that says, see, I wonder what this is. And then you look at the tag and it says seedly on it. So I guess you know that way. But by the way, uh, Randy, next week, we'll talk about these 10 pointers down here, substance and so forth. So for color, then let's just look, blow this up a little bit. And we see then 20 points if no uh, if uh, no faults are detected. But however, you look for color that's not dull, blotchy, and now you're uh, you're hiding the rest of this. Jess, can you read the rest? Yeah. Uh, so look for color that's not dull, blotchy, streaked, or faded. Bleeding is a fault in bicolors and variegated blooms. Uneven distribution of the second color is a fault for all the cultivars with two or more colors. Yeah. Okay. Let's make sure that I didn't switch over something. Okay. So there are two factors to consider when evaluating color. One is the quality of color and the other is imperfections. Okay, so let's look at uh, this bloom. I don't know why they even chose this. Look at that center. And look at these frets. I think they could have had a different picture, don't you think? Uh, okay, yeah. what are the things Obviously. we're looking for? Clean? Okay. Clear, lustrous. This is quality of color. Sparkling. I can't read that. Vibrant. Vibrant. Bright. Shiny. Shiny. Uh, what's Good. useful mean? Ron, do you know what useful means or Randy? No. I do not. I have no idea what useful means. I mean, if it was a hot flower, it would be like I could see how color could tie into like use, but yeah. yeah. Or I suppose it's possible that it is one that is in a color class that's not highly populated. Hmm. And appealing. <laughs> There's our favorite blue beer again, the green center. Better uh, place for it this time. Sorry? Sorry. That's okay. Uh, imperfections, dull. Gray. Impure. Yeah, impure and splotchy. Granular. Burns. We'll see an example of that here shortly. Faded, now we'll see a severely faded bloom here shortly. 
Or am I giving away answers? I think I am. Sorry. <laughs> uh, street. Veins. Bleeding in bicolors. Uneven distribution in blends. Okay, you get the idea? Sorry, my wheel. Okay, here we go. So blush against blend. I'm going to come back to this again. So apparently judges have often... Have, uh, uh, may often have difficulty determining when a cultivar exhibits a blush or when it's a blend. Blushes may change depending on climate or time of season. A blend will have a consistent color throughout the season. So we kind of talked about this before. Were there any other questions or comments regarding blushes as opposed to blends? I think we covered it fairly well before, didn't we? Yeah, Paula asked, but I think we've covered it. But she said, if it's a blush and is solid, is that a flaw? And this is where we're saying it's not, right? It's not uh -huh. a flaw. That's correct. Oh. Yes, any others? <laughs> Brax? can often, that can affect color and blooms. You can see them, especially here on the right, you can see the bra uh, uh, bracts here, definitely showing, distracts from the beauty of the bloom, definitely a fault. Whites often have this problem. Do you see how greenish this looks in the center? Those bracts are kind of causing that discoloration. Not, not ideal. Would you pull those bracts out? Um, probably it would be a chore, I think. Because they're, you know, like here on the right, they would be throughout the bloom. This is when you're teaching us all how to cheat a little bit. <laughs> you got her. That's what, that's what Tony told me. But I think uh, probably way, way too many. I mean, you'd be you'd be doing that all day long. If there were just really do a couple, would you, although I, it, they usually tend to be a lot or none, right? Yeah. And over here on the left, I don't even know how you would do it. <laughs> what a mess this is. Petaloids. You see these petaloids? Definitely don't want to see petaloids. Unless the, the bloom is supposed to have petaloids. Like what? Tolerant and orchid. Good job. There, there is a breeder in Australia right now that has like a fully double with petaloids that she's trying to like get going. It's super pretty. It would not show well, but that's it's really pretty. I'll have to send it oh. to you guys. Just be a right. novelty. Yeah. yeah. Right now it'd you be a, a novelty yeah. class. Yeah. Because there's got to be a place for those pretty things. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, not so much. There's our wolf petal. We already talked about plucking that thing, that white one. was the mention of a magic marker in one meeting. <laughs> uh, that'd be pretty dangerous, I think. Um, color faults by type. In other words, a solid color, what would be a fault for blends, what would be a fault for flame, blend, for variegated, and for bicolor. So let's look at the solid color. Well, do you see here that the color is not evenly distributed? Um, look here where my cursor is. That's a nice color. 
And now look up here at 12 o'clock. That doesn't look anything like that solid color. Over here at 10 o'clock. Down here at maybe 9 or 8.30 or something. You're down here at, at 8 o'clock. Not at all consistent. Over here at 3 o'clock or 4. Oh, look at this up here at 2 o'clock or 1 o'clock. So they should all look like this one, I would think. By the way, look at the bracts in here. Do you see the bracts? We're not looking at bracts here. We're looking at the solid color. So the color is not evenly distributed from the tip to the base. You know, Jerry, excuse me. Uh, and the issue can be is uh, obviously going back to where kind of where we started with color, you know, it's determined at the equator. You know, so you're you're getting vibrant color in the face where it's youngest. And then obviously you can see some real color problems at the equator. Yeah, ideally they would all be all be the same, but it's really breaking down here around the equator. Yeah. Blends. Well, if this is a blend on the left, it's got to be evenly distributed, and clearly it isn't. Look at this florette, very yellow actually. Compared to this one, again, even looking at the equator, that looks very much different than this one over here that's very dark. The ones here in the back are even darker. They even look solid. You've lost the blend completely down here at about 8 o'clock. And over hey, here to you... the right, I don't know what's going on here on the right. The center is just completely shot. But there's Jerry, no uniformity over here at all. Jerry, what do you what do you understand for unharmonious? Does it mean the two colors don't look nice together? Or? Yeah, I, I guess. I don't I don't understand <laughs> unharmonious or not smooth. I guess. I, yeah. It doesn't. I guess I concentrate on this even and uneven distribution. Yeah. Yep. I think that's correct. I, I, yeah. Good. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, yeah I agree. Uh, flame colors are not sharp or clean and distinct. Poor contrast, poor balance of colors, inadequate amount of color. Certainly not the same throughout. In fact, here, I can't tell. Is that the reverse? I believe so. Yeah. And this down here, also, yeah, all here, this one I can tell is the reverse because here you can see the face. Yeah. Yeah. That Western Spanish dancer, for example, is just a really, typically, is a really good example of a flame. Variegated. Well, we've talked about this before. Uh, bike colors. Well, you can see these tips are white. I mean, you would consider this to be a bicolor, but notice it's bleeding into the darker color here. It's not a sharp cut going across like that skipply spot was. Not good. Some have big tips and some have real little skinny tips. Yeah. Yeah. The old duet was kind of a, uh, certainly had the nice sharp break on it. Yeah. I mean, as Sharon has pointed out, look at this florette down here. It's practically all white, at least for yeah. what you can see. 
uh, compared to you know any of these up here that just have a little bit. And then this one's bleeding back. You can see how it's bleeding back. And yeah. Look at seven o'clock toward the center. There's almost no tip at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bleeding here also, you can see, coming back. Break is not sharp and clean, uneven. I'm surprised that's classified as a bicolor, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Do you know what it is? No. Form-wise, what is it? Anybody? Single. Single. Good job. Well, here, no matter what it is, if it's supposed to be, uh, I guess it's maybe supposed to be uh, by color. But, I mean, look, you've got solid, solid dark colors back here. You've got some white tips over here. And there's nothing uniform in all of that. That's This would definitely have a very low number of points out of 20. Very severe problem for uniformity. All right, Jerry. Yeah. I'd probably not even give it 14, 13. Okay. So you be the judge. What do you think? Is this a variegated or a bicolor? Well, you can see variation a variegation, can't you see the, in, in here? Yeah. What's the prominent mm -hmm. thing that's going on here? By color. By color. So, would you call this then variegated, or would you call it by color? I think by color. Good job. So all blooms with by color tips whether variegated, light blend, dark blend, or flame mm -hmm. are classified as a bicolor. Good job. What do you see here? Well, first of all, I'm not quite sure. Are these raindrops in here? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Yes. So other than the <laughs> raindrops... <laughs> Paula said the shade varies. Oh, I skipped over here too, didn't I? That's all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, the shade really does vary, doesn't it? Look up here at about almost 12 o'clock. Look how dark this floret is. And then coming over to about 10, much lighter. Much lighter. Way down here. Very dark, very dark over here. Yeah, inconsistent uh, color. There's a dark one right in here too, about one o'clock. Oh, I'm gonna go back to the arrows on the keyboard. This, then I won't skip over. Okay, what do you see here? Veronica, she might not, not uh, be on a candle. Somebody else want to take a stab? Sorry, it takes me a minute to unmute. Um, I have a bit of a delay, I think. So, so the the color fault. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, not consistent in color. I was. Um, I was also, consistent. Yeah. But also, this looks uh, in curve, doesn't it? I mean, it looks like we're seeing the reverse, perhaps, of these florets. They're certainly not the same going around. Um, Paula said that the color from the bottom is bleeding through to the top. Yeah, I think that's right. Streaky. This bloom has a reverse 
petal color. Oftentimes, the reverse color will bleed through to the face, causing splotchy, granular, and vein color. And that's kind of what's happening here and here, down here as well. Thank yep, you. You can see the, the turnover here. Can you see it here? This is the reverse. What do you see here? Shannon. Jerry didn't give me the answer this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forget what the petals mean when they curve downward. Um, yeah. I don't know what that I don't know what that means, but when the petals curve under. Well, I think these are coming out like semi cactus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, you know, a revolute here and so on. Um, but from a color perspective. Okay. Yeah, I see that. I'm not the... sure. It's hard to say, isn't it? First of all, the light, it, I mean, this is clearly outside. And the light is somehow Washing shining it out. over here, but not over here. I don't think this is a nice picture to do. Makes it pretty hard to really to set a, uh, a how severe a fault you would find any of that because of the, you know, the lighting situation. The I mean, light in the picture is really not very good. And basically, yeah. they're saying that this is a nice, nice blue yeah. color wise. Oh, uh, it does have that. So some dahlias have that like sheen to them where it's almost like silvery yeah you could kind of see it like in the middle on this one it's got that yeah. like, glitter almost if, if that's not a camera problem then yeah that, I, I, I agree uh this one should be fairly easy huh what do you see here you see a, a color fault here uh, really faded. Very faded. Yes. Very faded. Paula said sun bleaching. That yeah, could be. Browning or fading directly affects color. A bloom that burns or fades should be faulted accordingly. Severely in this case. What do you see here? Uneven color. Well, it kind of wants to be a uh, bicolor, don't you think? Right, but the even the bicolor leaves are different than the leaves. Right, the and bottom. and these all around here don't even have a contract a contract a contrasting color to them. This bloom is a bicolor, solid color replace, and so forth. Severe fault. What about here? I mentioned this a little bit ago, I think. A browning. Yeah, browning, burning, perhaps. Definitely a fault. Pretty clearly here. Wants to be what? Variegated, you think? but yep. not doing a good job of it. How about here? I really like this one. <laughs> I don't, is it? Uh, Coletta said, inconsistent. Pika tea is not the same on all petals. Paula says, bleeding. Is oh. It, is it a blend? Yeah. Could this not be like a dark blend? I mean, it's inconsistent for sure. Like, Yeah, it, it can, yeah I didn't even notice the Pika tea here. Yeah, you're right. It's not consistent throughout. And here you see this, this bloom down here, this uh, floret down here. 
how it's bleeding back. What's the difference again between bleeding and a blend? Um, well, just that the, I don't know, I guess this is an example of it. This one down here at about seven o'clock. Um, it's not a really nice, smooth change of color, of one color into, into the other. So you might all, you might think that looking at these up here, that it kind of wants to be a bicolor, but then down here kind of wants to be light blend here, or a blend, I don't know if it's light or not. But this one, it just kind of smears back. So you don't have this nice smooth change from one color into the other. Would the petal at three o'clock be the best petal? Uh, I can't see it because my pictures are in the oh, way. Over here with this one. Counter. This one. Yeah. I think that's the one Sharon means. Yeah. I think that's a pretty nice looking petal. Same. But when you get down here at seven o'clock, then, you know, if you compare three to seven, first of all, you know, they're inconsistent and one is attractive and one's not so attractive. Uniformity is the death nail on that bloom. Yeah. yeah. We'd, we'd been done at uniformity. Getting back to Jess, I mean, I would just, uh, smearing is probably not a, a term, but I would think that this is kind of smearing this one color back into the other, and that doesn't make a nice transition, a blend transition. Uh, what do you see here? This is a little subtle. You have to look closely. Look here. It's not like the spotty. Look here. Look here. What do you see? So they're saying bleeding, splotchy, spotting. Yeah, I see lots of little spots here. A lot of little spots here, a lot of spots here, a lot of spots here. Maybe some bleaching policies. Yeah, it could be. Let's see what it says. This blue shows spotting spray. Oh, spray deposits. So it might be that for insect control or something, somebody sprayed and the bloom didn't like it so much. Uh, if you use fish, like do I do a foliar feed of fish fertilizer and seaweed. Yeah. Definitely. If you hit light blooms with that, you're going to get spotting. Oh. Because it's kind of like this brown, stinky mixture. Oh. Uh, I think it's the oil in it. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, Randy. Oh. Good job. Did it. <laughs> Graduation. So do you have any? Uh, should uh, I stop? No, that's any questions? Oh, I had one, and I told her I'd get back to her. Let me scroll up real quick. So she said blushes may change. So uh, a blush can be solid. What if it's classified as solid but shows some blushing? Well, a solid color, the bloom would have a solid color. And the blush then needs to be uniform all the way around. And of course, if it's faded out, you don't even know there was a blush because it's already gone. But if you see some florets still having, a, 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 you know, this tinge of a, another color, but it's not uniform all the way around, and that's going to be a fault. Otherwise, it's going to be uh, fine. If it's uniform all the way around, it's. I wouldn't take any points off for that at all. And that's what one of the slides here was trying to point out, that some judges might not like 
blushes and therefore will knock a point or two off because of it, but they shouldn't be doing that. Blushes do can enhance the performance of the bloom. Isn't sometimes the blush like more in the middle and not on the edge on some flowers? Sometimes it's at least a partly because of the reverse. Uh, it can appear to be in the middle uh, and uh, fade as it opens out. And as long as it's uniform, then that's okay. Yes. Yep. Uh, Ron, I think your Baron Chloe is kind of the ideal that Sharon's talking about, where it's, you know, most of the blushes in the in and just around the center until it yeah matures but i don't really yeah. think I Jeff, did, I, could you could you ask whoever asked that question i apologize thank you was it answered yeah okay i did find that picture of that petaloid do you guys want to see it yeah let me share my screen real quick yeah should i unsit stop you I got it. Oh, wow. Oh. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I think she's, stunning. she's working on, I think she has just a patch kind of dedicated to blooms with those petaloids. It's um, Beck McConnell. She's She lives in Australia. So. Is there a petaloid in every one of those little yep. um, florets? Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's stunning. Wow. Yeah. It's almost it's almost like the petals and the petaloids are reversed because in general, <laughs> well, maybe not. Hmm. Yeah. They're, all, they're wrap around each of the petaloids. That's so pretty. Wow. Yeah. It's another, I don't think this is the same one. <laughs> but kind of that same form that she's yeah. working with. Huh. So she has, she has novelty opens and novelty fully doubles there, I yeah. would say. So she's kind of trying to trying to go for it. How yeah, is she doing that? That's a good question. How do you even get know. something like that? So I, I think she's isolating the varieties that are doing it and breeding them together. That like would, the gross seedlings. Yeah, that would be <laughs> But all of these have little petaloids in them. That'd be darn. So, <laughs> and a cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. Any others? Okay. I thank think you so much. Really good. good. Job, Jerry. Thank you, Thanks, Jerry. Jerry. You're nice welcome. Job. So I hope we'll, uh, next week, uh, Randy's up and he'll be looking at, I think, isn't that right, Randy? You'll be looking at substance and the Bull other H, yeah. full H stem position or bloom position. Bloom position. Yeah. Good. Great, right, guys. Well, I'm going to stop the recording.